So as things today start to move sideways and we take a look at the price action, which is almost nil, you got to ask yourself which ones of these cryptos, these digital assets, are performing quite well as far as the bag holders and which ones are actually giving a reasonably positive ROI. So what I wouldn't want to do today is just take a look at which cryptos are having the biggest amount of bag holders, which ones are doing pretty well. And to do that, we have to take a look at a site called Into the Block. And actually, before we take a look at that, there was a statement uh, before I uh, actually came in. And this is from uh, Darcy. And she says, do I wait another five minutes because I'm wrecked? And right now, you may notice that I'm not in my usual location. I am in uh, Seoul, South Korea. And we're here for Korean Blockchain Week. And I got to tell you, it's pretty eye-opening what's happening. First of all, uh, these events right now are not a uh, massive amount of people. And it led me to talk to a lot of uh, individuals, one of those being a ton of VCs that, I, that we met here. And I posted this just uh, about an hour ago. And I said, uh, talking to a, couple, a group of VCs yesterday here in Korea, they told me that in uh, March of 2018, there was a conference in Puerto Rico that was just massive. And they talked about how great it was. And again, this was March 2018, after we had just come off a high roughly December 17, 2017 for Bitcoin, and then Ethereum actually hit its high in 2018 in January. So in a couple of months, it was still had this, this massive effect. And it was just huge amounts of people, thousands of people there. The very next year, in 2019, you had 125 people total that came to this event. And why? Because as the price action goes down, nobody really cares. So I just want to remind everybody that cycles are real. And if this is your first bear market, don't worry because things change. And if you don't like the market right now, just hang around. It's like, uh, it's like the weather in Texas. It'll change about five minutes. So what I want to do is take a look at this. And there's a website called Into the Block. Now I don't have, there's no affiliate link. I just have the website. You can check it out. It's a paid service, links in the description. And what I want to see was just who is in and out of the money. When I talk about who is in and out, what the metric is looking at is as far as like is balance of tokens. Into the block identifies the average price or cost at which those tokens were purchased and compares it with current prices. If the current price is greater than the average cost, then that person or those individuals are in the money. The current price is less or the average cost is out of the money. And then of course, there's a sweet spot of in the money or uh, in, in between uh, that is like at level value. So before we get going, let me just ask you right now and put this in the, in the comments. Which ones do you think right now are outperforming everybody? Which ones of the cryptos that you personally believe in are people that are in the money? Because I got to tell you, uh, the ones that I've been talking about this channel, uh, Bitcoin's doing pretty good. But as far as some altcoins that I thought would do quite well are actually doing atrocious. So let's take a peek. So the first one I, I want to take a look at was Bitcoin itself, just to see how it is. Because, you know, people... As we get into these markets, people start talking about how Bitcoin is just uh, awful and it is uh, old technology and it's a boomer coin and uh, press may have heard it all. But as far as like in and out of the money, you know that 58% of people are in the money right now? 58% at, the, at money is 4% and 37% are out, meaning that people picked it up. Maybe they bought it at 69,000 and didn't buy any more. But remember, as time goes on, you dollar cost average, your dollar cost basis of what you actually bought Bitcoin goes down, even if you buy the very tip top. As you go forward and you, if you want a dollar cost average, your cost basis will go down. You would actually be in the money. Now, on this show, I think you all know what I'm going to say. I am not a financial advisor. I'm not your daddy. Do whatever you want to. But just remember that as time goes on, you, I understand why people become more and more Bitcoin maximalists because it holds value. And then the other thing that you have to, I like to take a look at is the holder's composition by time held. Who are the, di <laughs> this term, who are the diamond hands people? Who are the ones that are giving up pretty fast? And you can see that almost 70% of people are holding Bitcoin for over a year, meaning, and that could be one year, two year, 10 years, doesn't really matter. But you've got a lot of people who are holding on to this, not trading. 25% of one to 12 and 6% is less than one month. So you know which one is also doing pretty good? Ethereum. Ethereum, 52% is actually in the money. Out of the money is 44%. And 
And there is this one metric I want to want to mention, which is the concentration by large holders. This is Bitcoin. Only 11% are large holders. And that, that could be in total holdings of whales, address that own more than 1% of the supply, and investors between 0.1% and 1%. That would be large holders. You've got 89% of people, individuals, are not large holders, meaning it's very decentralized. You don't have a risk of them dumping on you. Now, if this was like 70, 80%, you might uh, be a little bit concerned. But Bitcoin is one of those that, uh, as time has gone on, it has uh, made its way into the hands of the minnows and not the whales. Ethereum, unfortunately, it is, as far as money goes, at current price, doing pretty good, 32 and 44%. But the concentration by large holders, you're looking at 44%, or roughly half. That would be whales and the other term that it used, uh, which would be investors, 0.1 and 1%. So just be aware of that. And uh, Ethereum is one of those projects. However, again, we take a look at the holder's composition. It's even better than Bitcoin. So people are staking, people are holding on, people are not selling it. 74% of people are holding on to this and they have one year or more, one to 12, 23, and three. So pretty good. Now let's get into the not so good. And this might ruffle some feathers, but it's just the truth. But the question is, do you still believe in it? Cardano. Cardano has been, as Ben likes to say, bleeding, bleeding heavily against Bitcoin. And as far as people in the money for Cardano, only 5%. 94% are out of the money. So if you old own Cardano, let me know in the comments if you are out of the money right now. Now, me personally, I've been buying Cardano since... 2018. So, of course, along the way, I have sold some. My cost basis is pretty low. And we're talking about like, I remember buying it at three cents, five cents, and six cents. Of course, as time has gone on, I sold and I would reaccumulate. It's a little bit higher now. But again, 5% and 94%. Concentration of my large holders, 32%. So, not awful, quite honestly. But this is the big thing. And this is where like, it comes into the community talk. If you believe in Cardano, you are all in Cardano. If you are believe in XRP, you are all in an XRP. In the holder's composition, 60% have held it over a year. 40% went to 12, and then less. It says less than a month is 0%, but I guarantee people, some, some have, uh, have done it. It's probably just below the threshold. And then, you know, on this channel, I've been talking about Polygon. I like it, so I invest into it, I hold it. Another one I've been talking about quite heavily, Polygon. How's that doing? Atrocious. 4% are in the money. 95% are out. Concentration by large holders. And this is something that we've talked about before. There are a lot of large holders. Those are whales and investors. And that is a concerning because when they want to dump, and they will dump, trust me, the VCs that I talk to have a way different mentality than the average investor. They say, if there's blood in the streets, don't let it be your blood. And uh, that's it. So just be aware of that Polygon is a, is, a, is a kingmaker, but you can get dumped on. And unfortunately, fortunately, I want to say it, people are holding on to it right now. But that's because I believe that they're all underwater. Why would you sell if you're underwater? Makes a lot of sense. They're holding on right now. 59% over a year, 392. And here's the shocker. And I, I say it's a shocker because I know people, you know, they, they think it's hilarious when I talk about this, but it's not. Dogecoin is a pretty darn good project as far as like if you take a look at the metrics. Look at this. Doge. And I'm not telling you what to buy. Again, do whatever you want to do. But Dogecoin, for what people make fun of it, and they, everybody will reference the Dogecoin millionaire, you know, 41% are in the money. That's better than Cardano. That's better than Polygon. Out is 56%. So no, there's, there's more people that are out of the money than in. That's a problem. But it's better than Polygon. 66% by large holders. And then the holders composition, this is amazing. 71%, 26 and three. And if you take a look at it, if you go to into the block itself, see this in, in and out of the money tab? It can very, very quickly tell you who is in and out by greens and reds. And you can see that. Bitcoin, Ethereum is doing quite well. Tether, nobody cares. USD, Lattice, Cardano, sliver of green. 
mostly red. Dogecoin, pretty nice, green and red. Tuncoin, the official currency, the official digital asset of Telegram, which I think is almost as creeping in the top 10. Doing pretty good. Nah, yeah, Polygon awful. Litecoin, wrap Bitcoin. And look at this one, Bitcoin Cash. So I know like people are saying right now, but Rob, my project is awesome. And it may be. It's just right now that the price action isn't that great. Here's another one that's awful. Avalanche. I own Avalanche. Look at this. Out of the money, 98.26%. That, that is pure evil. Chainlink. Talk about this, this quite a bit. And again, I think Chainlink is going to do quite well. And everything I talk about, even though the price action is awful, I think it's going to do well in the bull market. But Chainlink, I mean, we need oracles. We need to pull that outside data into the blockchain. Blockchain can't do that by itself. Chainlink can be used, and down it goes. Uniswap, awful. Lido, crypto.com. Look at this one, Arbitrum. One that I think is going to do fantastic out of the money, 98%. Optimism, another one I think is going to do pretty well. There's ones that are even worse than this. Where is, I don't know what blur is, but atrocious. Sandbox, 98% out of the money and so on and so forth. So I don't need to tell you, it's, uh, it's pretty darn awful. But here's the rub. The rub is, there was a story about Jeff Bezos and when he was starting up Amazon and just how it actually went. And there was an actually a letter that he put out to his to all of the, uh, the investors, the, sh the shareholders in Amazon. So again, if, and I'm gonna show it to you in a bit, but if you think these things are gonna do pretty well, it might behoove you to you know, hold on to it. But this was the letter that he actually put out. I thought this is pretty interesting. This is in 2000. Amazon shares fell 80%, just like we see in the crypto, crypto world. And he said this, he goes, look, it's been a pretty crappy year. We, we fell 80%. But here's some metrics to take a look at. And you think about these metrics as far as like LTV, the amount of people that are on the network, the community growth, and all those things. Amazon said the same thing. Or Jeff Bezos said, look, we served 20 million customers in 2000, which is up from 14 million in, in, from a year ago. Sales grew to 2.76 billion from 1.64 billion. Uh, average spend per customer was up $134 or 19%. Pro gross profits grew. Almost 36%, 36% of the Q4 US customers purchased from one of our non bmd stores and so on and so forth. And he says it very wisely. He says, so if the company is a better position today than it was a year ago, why is the stock so crappy? As the famous uh, investor Benjamin Graham said, in the short term, the stock market is a voting machine. In the long term, it's a weighing machine. And clearly, as time goes on, we'll be proven correctly. So if we take a look at that, and think to ourselves about the, about the products that we have out there. How are things done? How were things actually looked at in the markets previously? Now, there's this site that I, again, steal from all the time, Ben's in the Cryptoverse. Let's take those, those projects, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Cardano, Poly Polygon, and Dogecoin. Let's see how you would have done in this time four years ago, because everything's in a four-year cycle, right? We talk about this quite a bit. So I'm going to go to Tools... DCA strategies, and you can sign up for this. I mean, this portion is free. There's other paid parts of it, but let me get all this stuff out of here. Burp. A lot of stuff. Again, just like the VCs we're talking about, bear markets are awful. You can take a look at it in the actual conferences. And I got to tell you right now, in Korean blockchain week, pretty lackluster. So let's see here. Let's take uh, Ethereum, Cardano, Dogecoin, do we have Polygon somewhere? Polygon. And that's it. So let's take a starting date. I don't want that. Of September. What's the date today? It's the 5th. September 5th. And let's say you put in, I don't know. If Let's say you're a baller and you're doing 10 bucks a week. Let's just say for giggles, right? Not too many people can put ten thousand dollars a week, or you know, twenty thousand dollars a month, or whatever it is. But just ten bucks a week, and you heard all the different things we just talked about. Okay, that one's very low. This one's awful. It's a it's a, it's a junk market. 
you're ridiculous for investing into crypto. All right, all right, right, right. So 10 bucks a week, if we started on September 5th, 2019, and we stopped on January 1st, 2023. If we did that for, oh, you know, just about a year and a half or so, actually two years, I should say, this is what we'd have at the very tip top. We put 10 bucks a week, we invested $1,730. You know the Dogecoin, how much we'd have in Doge? 158,000. In Matic, 42,000. In Cardano, 22,000. ETH, 12,000. If we would have lump summed it, if for somehow we couldn't afford it, or we actually had the money on hand of like a, the invested amount at this point was 800 bucks, we put it all in, in the bear, the brutal bear market, we'd be up big time as far as a lump sum, 9,680. But the thing I wanted to mention is that this, if, if you don't have the money now, and again, do whatever you want to, but dollar cost averaging, a good amount of time is a pretty good way to go. And it beats out lump sums. Now, it depends on the actual time frame. But again, you can just see that even though people are in the money and out of the money and it's boring, this is what we have moving forward. And again, if you don't like the uh, climate right now of the uh, market, just wait a little bit. It'll turn around. So anyhow, let me know what you think about that in the comments section. And then let's uh, break it down. There's two, two couple of stories. First of all, uh, there's not some great news in the macro event. And if you take a look at our video yesterday, we talked about uh, there's four different factors that could uh, derail us from the four-year cycle. I don't know if our blow-off top is going to be 2024, 2025, or 2026. I don't know when it's going to be, but I know that bear markets don't last forever and usually leads to a bull. And bulls don't last forever as well. But this is some, uh, some news to be aware of. I mean, we talk about the good stuff. Let's talk about the bad. Right now, year-over-year -year growth in investor purchases as far as homes. This is from Redfin. We are down to pandemic levels. There is a drop in the sales of homes, almost 50%. The last time we had it that bad, you know when it was? The Great Recession. Starting in 2006, 2007, 2008, when the housing market just took a big dump, it's uh, happening again. Now, does that mean that in your particular area that you don't see some massive amount of uh, sales of homes? Look, if you're in, in, if you're in the United States and you're in California, there's no slowdown. If you're in Austin, there's no slowdown. If, they, if you're in New York, there's no slowdown. It's very, very little. But in a lot of places, historic or st statistically, we're seeing a big drop off the amount of, ho of homes that are being sold. What does that mean? It means that not only are the problems with uh, the jobs of construction workers, the jobs of underwriters, the jobs of real estate agents are going to also decrease because things aren't selling, things aren't moving. So just be aware of that. And then also, this is uh, just a little piece as far as probability of recession in the next four quarters. You can see that the probability of recession was at an all-time high. And uh, this is what uh, economists and people believe, that in Q4 2022, they had it almost at 50%, 43.5%, meaning that in the next four quarters, roughly, Q4 2023, we'd see a soft recession, or a recession, I should say. So just be aware that as these things come forward, that recessions are not off the table. I don't care if it's soft or hard or whatever else they want to call it, or a soft landing or hard landing. I still think we're going to get a recession, and we're going to see some more negative price action. So just be aware that if you're going to dollar cost average and get into it, uh, just be prepared for a rocky road. But if it was easy, everybody would do it and everybody would be rich. So good luck with that. And then lastly, if you don't get rich off of, off of this, which again, this is not a get rich quick scheme, it takes dedication, it takes time. Just be aware there's hackers out there. And just because you didn't lose any money doesn't mean that different products are losing money which is bad. Crypto casino stake just lost 40 million yesterday or today. Uh, the platform describes the exploit as being related to a private key leak. I don't know that it possibly happens, but here we are. I'm not gonna dwell onto this. I just wanted to remind everybody that there's a reason why I have the rules underneath me. It's all gone. Never invest more than you can afford to lose. Everything's a scam until pure otherwise. Don't leave anything on exchanges. Use cold storage devices. Maybe separate those cold storage devices. Maybe have a diversity of cold storage devices like I do. I have Elipal, Ledger, and uh, also Tangent. 
don't use leverage. Take profits along the way because nobody ever went broke taking profits. So the stake, stolen funds were converted to Ether and transferred to several externally owned wallets. And I found this very interesting that the scammers, <laughs> they left, they took, they took a lot of the different uh, uh, crypto that was in there, but they still left 2.1 million in various altcoins, also known as S coins, because maybe they're like, I don't even want that stuff. <laughs> stuff that stuff's not, not for us. But whatever happened, stake wallet, the, the, the staked wallet that was targeted still holds $340,000 worth of ETH. So they didn't get everything in 2.1 million in various altcoins. So just remember, there's scams everywhere, and it's not how much you make, it's how much you keep. And that's it for today. So look. If you like today's video, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing. Everything we talk about is time sensitive. Take off. Thanks so much for stopping by. I appreciate it. See you on the next one.